Welcome back to State of the Union. I'm Jake Tapper. Our calendar is getting crowded with the wrong kinds of anniversaries, those of horrific attacks on Americans in public places. Tomorrow, for example, marks two years since the deadly white supremacist rally in Charlottesville. And my next guest gave a speech this week at another site marred by an awful attack, Mother Emanuel AME Church in Charleston, where a white terrorist murdered nine worshipers in 2015. Joining me now from the campaign trail in Dubuque, Iowa, to talk about rising hate and more, 2020 presidential candidate Senator Cory Booker from New Jersey. Senator, uh, thanks for joining us from the campaign trail. I, I want to get your reaction to the president retweeting this deranged conspiracy theory, obviously no evidence, falsely link linking Jeffrey Epstein's death by apparent suicide to an alleged murder by the president's political opponents. What's your reaction? You know, this is just more recklessness. What he's doing is dangerous. Uh, he's giving light to not just conspiracy theories, but really whipping people up uh, into anger and worse uh, against uh, different people in this country. And so this is a tired way that the president does. He's been using the Clintons as uh, a means uh, for a lot of his false accusations. But remember, this is a nation now where we've seen uh, just horrific acts, whether it's someone walking into a pizza shop based upon these kind of conspiracy theories uh, to take violent action. We see people's lives being threatened because this president whips up uh, hatred. Um, this is a, a very dangerous president that we have right now, uh, trying to divide us against each other and really using the same tactics and the same language, not just of white supremacists, uh, uh, but also using the same tactics and languages of the Russians. If you look at the intelligence reports about how they're coming at our democracy. President Trump said on Friday that in the wake of the El Paso and Dayton massacres, he's pushing Congress to enact what he calls, quote, meaningful background checks. Uh, the president said he's going to be able to get the NRA on board as well. Uh, do you believe that? And do you believe that he's going to push forward for background checks? I believe very little that this president says uh, where he tweets from pulling troops out of uh, Afghanistan to that he solved the nuclear uh, crisis in North Korea. Uh, he tweets a lot of things. He says, uh, makes a lot of uh, bold statements uh, that don't just come through. He doesn't follow through. He doesn't do the things that keep our nation safe and strong. So absolutely not. A real president in this time of crisis where America is grieving where fear is penetrating our nation. I hear from kids on the campaign trail standing up and just talking about what ultimately for our nation right now is a surrender, it's a saying that we can't protect our children, so when they go to school, we're gonna teach you how to duck and cover and hide uh, and shelter in place. This is an abject surrender of leadership on this president's part. He has taken no responsibility for this penetrating fear that's uh, in, our, in our society. And, uh, frankly, he's not leading in this moment. So I don't believe what he tweets. I've seen no real action. I've seen nothing coming out of Mitch McConnell. Here we are on a summer recess when this nation is uh, deeply hurting and uh, deeply worried about their safety. I've talked to teachers at the Iowa Fair yesterday who said, we start up school in a matter of uh, days and we're going to go back to classrooms where that's going to be hanging over the classrooms. This is the time for decisive action. Congress to go back, for this president to lay out a real substantive plan, but he's mm -hmm. doing none of that. He's failing this nation and in so many ways responsible for where we are right now. It does seem that there might be uh, some momentum for a so-called red flag law uh, to pass the Senate uh, that would allow an individual's family or potentially law enforcement to, to temporarily block an individual from having firearms if he, see, he or she seems to be a, a danger to himself or others. But Senate Democratic Leader Schumer said passing a red flag law without the background check bill that the House of Representatives passed would be a, quote, cop out. He said, quote, Democrats in the Senate will seek to require that any red flag bill that comes to the floor is accompanied by a vote on the House pass, passed universal background check legislation. So, Senator, I guess my question is, would you support a red flag law as a standalone bill? I mean, it isn't something better than nothing? Well, again, I have a comprehensive plan, perhaps the far, most far reaching amongst Democratic candidates. And yeah, so called red flag laws are a part of that. And I think we should do that as a nation. Um, but it's not going to be enough uh, to end the epidemic of mass shootings. And it's not going to be enough to. Uh, 
really restore a sense of, uh, bring a sense of calm and security back to our nation. Uh, so I, I will do whatever I can to leverage more change, to leverage the steps that we need that will dramatically, that the evidence has shown will dramatically lower the levels of shootings. So again, this is going to be a chess match and, and uh, tactical sausage making in the Senate, but I'm going to say very clearly, we need far more bolder action to make our nation safe. Red flag laws, yes, they're important, but they're nowhere near enough uh, to stop these uh, rising levels of mass shootings, now having more sunrises and sunsets in our nation, than we, the, the less sunrises and sunsets than we've had mass shootings. Uh, we have to do more. American public should demand more. And frankly, things like background checks are overwhelmingly supported by gun owners. The fact that we're not doing that is a failure of leadership. Former Vice President Biden uh, appeared to stumble at an event earlier this week, a campaign event. He said that, uh, quote, poor kids are just as bright and just as talented as white kids. And then he seemed to correct himself, saying wealthy kids, black kids, Asian kids. The campaign said he misspoke. Uh, but one of your rivals, New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio, on Twitter said, quote, to quickly dismiss Joe Biden's words as a mere slip of the tongue is as concerning as what he said. We need to have a real conversation about the racism and sexism behind, quote, electability. Uh, what do you make of this all? Um, I, I pay very little mind to it. I mean, uh, Joe Biden will have to man answer to his, uh, his words himself. I will say this, that um, this idea of electability doesn't usually center on the broader ideals of that. I'm going to Milwaukee to do a rally. I know we're going to have hundreds and hundreds of people there. If you can't energize uh, the urban base as well as the suburban base, as well as rural area, we need candidates that can create the kind of excitement that we saw the last time we really saw it was President Obama. Uh, we would have won a lot of our, uh, uh, we would have won this presidential election. And, and again, I don't put this on Secretary Clinton, who ran in, in many ways uh, a, a campaign that was dealing with the headwinds of the Russians and uh, the, the, the Trump campaign using psychographics, doing everything they could to suppress African American votes. Uh, we need to learn from that in this race, and we need to have candidates that can inspire a movement-like election, uh, not somebody that we think is a safe bet, uh, but a candidate that can really energize the aspirational nature of our party, uh, talking about a future that, in, that engages people and inspires them to come to the polls. That's why I'm running. I believe we can have a candidate uh, that can reach out to the full breadth, not just of our party, but our nation. And that's why I've been going to cities like Philadelphia and uh, cities like Milwaukee to show uh, that we can energize a tremendous excitement amongst core base voters that we need to win. Senator Brooker, before you go, uh, we all wanted to offer you uh, condolences on the loss of your Aunt Alma. She was 100 years old. Uh, she lived in Iowa, one of your biggest supporters. You went to her uh, memorial, her funeral yesterday, and we just wanted to offer our condolences to you and your family. I'm, I'm really grateful for that. She lived an extraordinary life, uh, born before women had the right to vote, born, born during a summer of some of the greatest uh, domestic terrorism we've, we've seen. And from all of that, she and my grandmother in this incredible state of Iowa were able to raise extraordinary families that have gone on uh, and done some great things. This is our common history. And in Iowa, a lot of people don't know about how a, a town called Buxton, which is where my family first moved, was this town ahead of its time, blacks and whites coming together, descending into the mines to scrape out their American dream. We have some incredible history of Americans across racial lines. Uh, creating a, a much better America. And that's what we celebrated when I gave her eulogy. And that's what I believe uh, we need to be uh, celebrating now in our country with uh, so many leaders trying to divide us against each other. We need to get back to that spirit in our nation that understands we have common cause and common purpose. And that's how she lived. And I hope that her legacy will go on, not just in her family, but uh, will inspire that in the rest of us. Well, may her memory be a blessing. Senator Booker, thanks so much. Thank you very much.